Quickly before I start today's video, let me remind you about one of our sponsors for this trip, Y Food. We have been living off these drinks whilst we've been here in LA, but I also wouldn't be able to do trips like this one without very kind sponsors such as Y Food. Uh, with the amount that I travel, the amount that I'm out and about filming and just rushing around, I often forget to eat and especially to eat well often grab a chocolate bar or a sandwich from the petrol station and that never really does me that well. And if I try and film or work whilst hungry, well, it's all a bit of a disaster and Tony can definitely attest to that this trip. So that's why I always carry these Y food bottles around with me. They fill me up for about three to five hours and they're full of goodness. It says so right on the bottle. It's got 26 vitamins and minerals, high in protein, fiber, lactose-free, gluten-free, etc. So if you're like me or Tony and you're constantly running around, just yeah, forgetting to food yourself and feed yourself well, I highly recommend these. But even if you're not someone like that and you just want to try out a new drink, they're super delicious. I'm obsessed with the cold brew coffee flavor, the new peach lassi flavor, and then this, the classic choco. So yeah, go check out Y Food now. All the information is on screen and there is a link in the description. Thanks again to Y Food for sponsoring this trip and allowing it to happen. Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to our final day here in LA. Actually, our final few hours here in LA. I'm so upset. I'm really sad. <laughs> you said earlier that you were also quite excited to get home, but I think we've had such a good time that we're both, yeah, we're quite sad the trip's over, aren't we? Yeah, I'm glad to go home, mate. I've got to go back to work as well. Yeah. Although I have been working here this week, actually. To be fair, you have. He's yeah. been up in the morning, selling cars, late at night, saying sell this tomorrow. No, I mean, social media work. I do, mean, you count, do you count it as work nowadays? Well, yes, mate. Of course I do. It's always doing that. podcast stuff and... Uh, yes, it's, it's part of work for me now. Good man. <laughs> well, on uh, on the note of podcasts, on the... On uh, that note. On that note. <laughs> <right there. laughs> on the note. <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> um, I'm assuming by now most of you would have checked out our podcast, Behind the Glass, but I am aware that there will be some of you that haven't, and maybe there are some new viewers to this channel with this video. So I thought right now, as we make our way towards the airport, We'd give you a flavour as to what our podcast is about, because that's really the predominant reason why we've come to LA. And actually, uh, earlier today, we did an awesome collaboration with Spike's Car Radio, one of the biggest US podcasts. So yeah, it's been a great week for the podcast. Yeah. And just to try and, you know, hammer it home one final time, we're going to do kind of like a bite-sized podcast right now in this car. It may feel like a slightly different seen through glass video than usual, but that's because it's kind of like a behind the glass. It's a behind the glass takeover. <laughs> <laughs> and we are kickstarting this mini podcast in style with the roar of this Escalade V series, which has been our daily whilst we've been here in LA. And I thought we would theme this chat basically around uh, this car and talk about what it's been like to live with, because look, this is a $150,000 Super SUV. Rip off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, you've given away your whole uh, mentality <laughs> pretty soon. But let's just backtrack for a second. What do we reckon this competes with in Europe for our European your viewers? Podcast hosted by two rather uninformed. Wait, what's happened there? That wasn't planned. <laughs> the intro to our podcast just started playing. It's like the car knew what we were trying to do. It's coincidence. Uh, it was coincidence. Yeah. What would we say this car's rivals are in Europe? Hard to, t I, I mean, I'm not sure. There is, I've never been anything so big in all my life, so I don't think it actually has a rival. But if I can, if I can probably think of something, it would be a Range Rover. Yes, uh, yeah. it, if they if they did a big Range Rover SVR, yeah, it would be that. Yeah, uh, size wise, it doesn't really compare with anything. No, but sort of vibe and performance, it's it's luxury with a big engine. Yeah. And so let's talk about the luxury side for a second because well, when we first arrived, we were both just like, oh my God, this looks, it's amazing, there's stuff everywhere. And we were really overexcited children. I've remained an overexcited child. Oh no, right on red. Oh, that, that was, was close. Oh. <laughs> We've both also been quite excited this week by the whole fact that you can turn red on a red light. Sorry, right on a red light. And I was edging forward and I suddenly looked up and I saw the sign saying no right on red. Um, but yeah, so we were overexcited children. I've remained an overexcited child all week. You've kind of slightly come down from the mountain tops. You, you, What's happened? Why have you slightly <laughs> gone off this car this week? Well, uh, you know, for the first half hour, I was like ecstatic about this thing. Like, but after an hour of being in it, mate, like, I don't know. It's, 
I just don't think the finish is quite as nice as a Range Rover. And when I said that to you, you was fuming. Yeah. <laughs> we had a full on fight. We had a full on argument. We, had a full -on, we don't fight often, but we did on that occasion. <laughs> because I, I cannot understand what is better in a Range Rover. Like the design or layout, maybe, but that's and the subjective. finish and the finish mate but you say the finish this is all beautiful leathers i can see it's stitched all the materials feel great everything in my hand all the contact points are super nice everything's laid out where it should be it's minimalist but also there are buttons it's not all touch screen i don't get like this is alcantara which is nice in a sporty model like what more does a range rover give you i just get that feeling in a range rover when i get in a range rover it's that warm feeling that you get from no other car mm. and i said this to you before there's not a car on the planet that gives you that feeling and this car when i got in it i was dead excited to get in it one because i've never been in one before and it's like all new like a kid in a sweet shop but then like i said after 30 minutes like i mean i'm fairly hard to please by the way very, very hard to please <laughs> painfully so yeah. painfully so so i don't know i, I just regard the the Range Rover is especially the new one as the the, the pinnacle yeah. or even the a, a Bentayga mate would you put this in the same bracket as a Bentayga yeah yeah I know I'd probably put a Bentayga nicer than this I would agree yeah I would agree a Bentayga feels nicer than this but it, Price wise, I, you help me out. No, uh, no, a be, uh, new Ben is more money than this. Yes, yeah, yeah, so it's probably a level above just in terms of pricing. So, yeah. look, hey, look, each to their own. Uh, I, I get where you're coming from in terms of the overall feeling of a Range Rover badge, but maybe because we're not familiar with the Cadillac badge, and wow, that Mini is just just pulled out. He turned right on red when maybe he shouldn't have, so. He had a Cadillac in him. I mean, that was a stone if I've ever seen one. <laughs> um, but yeah, because we don't have the association with the Cadillac badge, I think I think here, American viewers correct me if we're wrong, the, the Escalade is a kind of luxury vehicle. It's got that kind of association of people going, oh wow, Cadillac Escalade, like that's that's cool. But we just, we don't have that, whilst Range Rover's always been that in our hearts. So maybe that's where we, that's where it's kind of feeling maybe, missing. Maybe this is the American Range Rover, mate. Yeah, there we go. I think that's kind of it. And from my side, it's it's lived up to that. You know, it's it's been fantastic this yeah. week, this car. Like, it honestly, we've piled stuff into it. We've used it on every occasion for every different thing, whether it's going out filming, using it as a camera car, whether one of us has been in it and one of us has been in something else. We've piled it full of camera gear, all of our luggage. We've gone out to dinner in it, whatever it might be. We've got Wi-Fi hotspot in the car. Okay, yeah. nothing revolutionary, but still fantastic. We've got heated seats, cooled seats. We've got cruise control and great sound systems and Apple CarPlay, everything that you would expect and want from a luxury car. The back even has TVs in it. It does, yeah. We haven't been in the back, actually. That's probably a bit of a You know, oversight. the biggest saving grace that this car has, technology-wise, in the whole car, mm -hmm. is the blind spot monitors. Because people in the US, if you've not been to the US, ladies and well, gentlemen. Let's say California. Let's California, say California. California, yeah. California. On the highways are completely lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> if you are trying to change lanes and there's a gap, they will accelerate into the gap when they see you indicating. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, I want to change lane now and I'm going to indicate, they'll accelerate into that gap so you can't move. <laughs> Yesterday, I nearly killed about four people and myself because every time there was a space, I then started to move and I suddenly, <laughs> I was like swerving all over the shop. And also in this thing, it's so big that you could run over children and just not even notice. Yeah, literally. And so, where in Europe, a lot of the like safety systems are actually super annoying. Here, I actually am quite grateful that we've got them. Yeah. Because you just don't know what's going on around you. No. It's so huge. As a car to live with, there's just a day-to-day -day wafter. Like, what a thing. But this is the V-Series. Yeah. So it goes above and beyond being a wafter. There's performance. Oh, it's not getting any better, my American accent. I've, I've really been trying. I've been trying to perfect it. I know a lot of you guys find it annoying. It's so but bad. I enjoy doing it, and it's, <laughs> it's definitely better than Tony's. And yeah. I'll let you in on something, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more on our podcast. But everywhere we've gone this week, because it's Tony's first time in America, and he's been kind of bowled over by Americans, he has repeated <laughs> everything any American has ever said to him, but kind of under his breath in a slightly aggressive and sarcastic way. In American. In American. So literally, they'll say, they'll say, can I help you with anything, sir? And he goes, can I help you with anything, sir? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to think you're nuts. Like, it, like everywhere. Like, would you like any sugar? Would you like any sugar? <laughs> 
I, how we have not got <laughs> shot, I do not understand, uh, but somehow we survived. But yeah, anyway, so this thing, performance. Uh, I've now had a bit of a mind blank, but 6.3 litres? Didn't we start with 6.2 litres? Is it 6.2 or 6.7? Well, it's one of them. It's got a lot of leaders. <laughs> um, and nearly 700 horsepower. Yeah. Now, yeah, uh, you would have known this if you watched all the LA content, but just in case you are new to the channel or, or new to our LA series, uh, we started off the week in actually a different car, in a, in a red car. It had a bit of a glitch, which meant we were down on power. We broke that one. I think we broke it. We broke it. <laughs> <laughs> it meant that we were sort of driving everywhere with this burling great V8, which from the outside sounds incredible, but it wasn't going anywhere. No. Like we'd floor it and we were like, this can't be right. Okay, this car does weigh nearly three tons, but it's supposed to have 700 odd horsepower. Like something's gone wrong. And yeah. anyway, Cadillac kind of like went, look, it's fine. Let's just swap it out. And we've been back in this one. And, and since we've had this car, we've noticed the power, right? Hugely. It's hugely so. Yeah. I'm kind of waiting for a red light so we can basically launch it. Because <laughs> what you don't want to do is go to a canyon in the thing. I mean, I already mentioned the three tons, but that's not the only problem, is it? I mean, the steering and this the brakes and everything. It's not a dynamic car. Well, the sheer size of the thing for a start. Although, on a plus point, in LA or in California, it's where we are, it doesn't feel that big, mate. No. The roads are huge here. The roads are huge. And so, what's when you get into it and you climb into it, it's kind of like just, you know, you're stepping up into it and in it's kind of empowering. Like, I'm like, oh, hey, like, here. It's just, like, it's cool. Like, it's yeah. just cool. But then the minute you start driving, you're like, oh, okay, just normal size. <laughs> like, just cruise. Like, it you can fit in all the in. lanes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first mile, I was like, where do I place this car? And you just said, in between the white lines. And, <laughs> yeah, I, was like, yeah. and I was like, oh, yeah, actually, you know, that's easy enough, isn't it? So, um, it's kind of mad. So, yeah, straight lines is where this thing really excels. We did throw it around a few corners while getting on the highway. Do you remember that? I I, I remember, but I was driving. <laughs> what happened exactly as we... We rolled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we literally nearly rolled on our roof. So yeah. you've got you to gotta keep that in mind. But I'm sure Cadillac will be the first to say, and others will be the first to say, it, it's, you know, this is not a canyon carver. It's not what it's, it's for. It's not what it's for. It's, it's just about wafting in luxury with a big old engine, which seems to be the most popular engine in America, a V8. Yeah. I mean, everything has a V8. Um, Even and, the electric cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so therefore, yeah, it's it's just about, you know, combining the two. Now, if you ever get the chance to drive one of these, or maybe you're even considering buying it, there's one button in this car which does take it from being luxury, <laughs> wonderful cruiser to just stupid. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna push it now, it's down here. It's a little V button. You won't have noticed anything yet, but if I uh, select manual gears and coming around this corner, I will launch it slightly. And now, when I downshift, Oh, it's not doing it today. <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute, let's, let's do a bit of this. Oh, we've died. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Why is it not doing it? <laughs> we broke this one as well. Oh, no, wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so something's gone horribly <laughs> wrong. <laughs> it pops and crackles, or it did more than my F type. What have we done here, Tony? Hold on a second, let's push this. Push that. And. Oh, it's not doing anything. Mate, you've broke it. Oh, wait, hold on, let me go here. Let me go sport mode. Let's do that. And we're going into a tunnel. Come on, if it's ever going to work, it's going to work now. We're so sorry. Ready, ready. No, I've lost all the crackles. <laughs> oh, well, this is a disaster. <laughs> I mean, it's not working. Nothing. What's happened? Don't know, mate. Well, all week, you push that V button and it just goes... No, it did. But hopefully you get the idea. The thing is really fast and really loud and does crackle on occasions. But the problem is when you do that kind of acceleration, well, your MPG gets impacted. Do you want to talk about that briefly, Tony? Uh, I'd like to, yeah. So currently we are doing 10.1 to the gallon. <laughs> and at points this week, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen 3.9. Oh, you said that's good. <laughs> I was about to interrupt you and say that 10.1 is good. And the terrifying thing is, 
to refuel this car must cost <laughs> as much as a house because we've drive we drove around all week and we haven't we haven't had to refuel a thing. No. We've been doing single figure MPG and we haven't had to refuel it, which must mean the tank is so big that here in California or in the UK, I don't even want to think what it would cost to refuel. Yeah. Because prices in California in LA aren't dissimilar to UK prices. They're five or six seven it's five or six dollars per gallon here. We're probably eight or nine dollars per gallon, but we have seen some sort of seven getting near to eight dollars per gallon. So the prices aren't awfully mm. dissimilar. And yeah, to refuel this thing must be terrifying. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make it crackle again because it's really annoying that yeah, I've done mate. that. <laughs> well, apparently we're just not very good at driving these cars, but it is really funny when it crackles. It's just, just a bit like a kid's kid's car, but it's not one to do it. But yeah, I mean, in summary, if you were in this country, would you have one? No, because I've fallen in love with a truck. Yeah. Well, no, you've fallen in love with another SUV, which borders with being a truck, which is? The Bronco. Mm. And to compete with this, you'd have to be having a Bronco Raptor. It'd still be a lot cheaper than this. Would it? I think so, mate. What you got the... Google on your phone? No. <laughs> I think it was a hundred thousand dollars ish. Okay. The Bronco Raptor. Sure. Um, and I and I think uh, market adjustment, as they call it here, I think it's hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Sure. So, Maybe not too dissimilar. But Maybe not still too a dissimilar. Bit but I would say that's like going from V8 big Range Rover to V8 Defender. Bronco's Defender, yeah. this is Range Rover. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. But here we are in the classic LA traffic. We don't have a front facing camera right now because we're trying to give you a flavour of the podcast. But you know, this is how you live your life if you're driving in and around <laughs> LA traffic literally and that's where this thing excels so you know the v series element is fun it's a it's a really expensive way to get around anywhere because of its fuel consumption but you know to launch off a traffic lights to overtake someone and just purely for the remote control startup as you walk up the car i think it's worth it and and i would have one to finish off our video and to finish off our time in la let's try and agree on five key points like you know what would you call it five reasons to or not to get a cadillac escalade you know a, cl a cliched youtuber title five reasons to get one yes um well if we're comparing it to a bentley it's good value good value compared to some of its rivals yeah and in this country i, I, I bet a range rover too so yeah good value yeah weirdly yeah. even though it's 150 thousand dollars <laughs> Um, it's fast. It's very fast in a straight line. Yep. Um, it looks pretty cool. I think it looks great yep. and it's kind of a mixture of over and understated. Yeah. Because there's plenty of other Escalades cruising around and you kind of go unnoticed compared to some of the big F-150s. Anyway, so yeah. Yep. Looks. It, it drives nice in a straight line. Not that problem. I'm not going to include that. No? No. Because <laughs> if it didn't drive well in a straight line, well, I don't think we should be nice about it. I mean, that would be a real disaster. Okay. I'm going to put in there interior quality. I okay. know I know you're going to struggle with that, but I, I, for me as an American car, and sorry, Americans, yeah, I'm going there. Some of the other stuff we've experienced this week has not had this kind of interior. So I think interior is stunning. Yeah. And what's our fifth point? Well, you can think of the next one, mate, because I'm all done the way it sounds. <laughs> Even if it's not crackling, which I'm just gonna try one more time, even though there was a cop somewhere behind me. Like... <laughs> there we go! It's not as much as it has been, but it's still there, like. Okay, I did it once, but um, the way it sounds is pretty spectacular. Uh, anyway, we are now by the ocean, which means we're going the wrong way, so we need to turn around and head to the airport to, yes, draw a line under this epic trip to California. We hope you've enjoyed it. Has been flat out. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes. Most of the work we've been doing here has been off camera, a lot of network, a lot of meetings with various people and companies and individuals plotting and planning 
future trips and adventures here. So say we had that awesome collaboration with Spike's Car Radio. I absolutely love doing that. I think by the time this video comes out, that episode would already be live, so I'll try and put a link to it in the description below. But our plan is to not only have Spike and his whole crew, Zuckerman and Lieberman maybe, and people like that, onto our show, uh, but we also want to come back and work with Matt Farrow at Smoking Tire and other people uh, to keep collaborating uh, and in the podcast space, because we like doing that, don't we? We love it, mate. We love it. So yes, if you've enjoyed this series, if you've enjoyed our analysis of the this car, uh, maybe check out other Behind the Glass episodes and see what you think. Uh, as ever, it's youtube.com forward slash Behind the Glass or just search Behind the Glass on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Uh, if you want to follow Tony, he's at Tony Grohwood Car Sales on most social media platforms. Uh, hopefully, by now you would have subscribed to this channel and turned on notifications. But if you haven't, do that now. And I'll be back with you with some probably grey and rainy and hopefully not boring UK content very soon. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you.